Hey gamers, it's Winterweet here from Grind This Game, and I'm just playing around with the Thermo Aqua Tuner here, uh, and I'm trying to use it to boil polluted water in order to create fresh water. So I did this in uh, non-debug mode in the game, and it kind of worked, but it had overheat problems, and I wasn't using thermo switches or hydro switches, so it was easy for it to kind of run away and, and melt down. But this is a little bit better setup, and I'm just going to kind of explain it here. So we've got our initial polluted water tank right here, and I've got uh, a liquid tepidizer in here on a thermo switch, and it'll turn off if the temperature goes uh, above 116. But the tepidizer turns itself off anyway when it reaches 85 degrees. So you can put more water in here. You could have a, another thing that's pumping water in here slowly. But the reason I put the tepidizer is to preheat the polluted water uh, to 85 degrees. That kind of makes it a little bit easier to heat up in this uh, aqua tuner chamber here. So I'll just do the plumbing view here. So there's one pump that's pumping the water into a valve and then into the aqua tuner itself. And then it comes back out of the aqua tuner and it comes along here and it goes into this storage tank. So this is where the cold water ends up. And the other pump pumps uh, up here into a valve and then over a bridge and then into the actual chamber itself. Let's call it the reaction chamber. And I'll just show you the two uh, amounts I have here. I kind of had to play with these amounts to get it dialed in just right. So the flow control into the chamber itself, sorry, the flow control into the aqua tuner is at 1800 grams a second and that keeps the aqua tuner from kind of melting down and the other valve which leads into the chamber its uh, flow control is at 300 grams per second so it's like a, a slow drip into this little chamber and I have a hydro switch leading into a thermo switch leading into the aqua tuner so if the temperature of this tiny amount of polluted water is below 127 or 128 ish this will turn off basically if the water gets too hot in here it'll turn off and also if the amount of water in here becomes too thin below 10 kilograms it'll turn off so this prevents it from melting down and that flow of 1800 keeps it kind of at around 130 to 150 degrees it prevents it from melting down which is at 175 degrees so as this polluted water trickles in it drips on top of the really hot aqua tuner, heats it up, turns it into steam, and leaves behind dirt, and the clear, the clean water steam comes out of here. And what I've done here with these mechanized airlocks is they're made out of wolframite, which is a really good conductor of heat. So this cool water that we're dumping into cools down these doors, and so when the steam hits these cooler doors, it turns into water really quickly and then dumps into this kind of collection vessel here. So I'll just show you it running here. So if you watch the thermo aqua tuner, it's sitting at around 125, 130 degrees Celsius. And if you look at the polluted water just sitting there, it's 22 kilograms at about 120 degrees Celsius. So it's just shut off probably because there's not enough water sitting there yet. So the water will fill back up to 10 kilograms and then it'll kick back on right now. Yeah. So steam is being formed, it's cooling against these doors here and then it's falling down into our collection vessel. So let's speed it up to uber fast speed. It's not making very much water. Even though it's kind of... It's probably not an optimal setup, but it's a pretty decent setup. We could probably use more aqua tuners for more effect, but... That looks like a lot of water, but it's a tiny amount. It's just a few grams in this column here. So 
what I'm going to do is pause and kind of destroy this water here. There we go. So how much do I have in here? Only a tiny amount. So actually I'll wait until the cycle comes back around here. At cycle 150 I'll kind of start the uh, counting. So there we go. So I'll clear out all this water. So we got basically an empty tank. There's only a few little grams in there. We're going to start at cycle 150 and I'm going to let it run for maybe 10 or 20 cycles. We'll see. And then we'll pause and we'll take a measurement. So that was 10 cycles and we got we got 254 kilograms of water. Which is not very much. Not even a complete tile. So I added more water to this chamber and I moved the hydro switch up one tile. I think this will buffer the temperature better. It'll take a lot longer a lot longer to heat up first initially. We're at 108.2 degrees so far. Unless we reach 119 and just everything boils at once. So we've reached 120 degrees. Uh, in this tile for polluted water, so we should be getting some steam. There we go. Got a big burst of it. We got dirt coming out too. It's boiling it really rapidly. So it took like I think 30 or 40 cycles to fill up to two tiles worth and it got up to 121 degrees and almost half of the water in here or more than half boiled all at once into one giant burst of steam. You can see down here we have like s four tiles of 700 kilograms of water but it would take a very long time to refill this and go through the cycle again. So whether you're doing it with a trickle where a tiny amount of water is coming out, or whether you do it in these big giant bursts. It's a pretty terrible way to deal with polluted water, to clean polluted water. I'd love to hear your thoughts on a kind of a better design. I'm sure there's ways to optimize it, but even if we got like a multiple hundred percent improvement, it would still be a crappy amount. Considering that this thing uses uh, one kilowatt, two kilowatts for preheating, plus all the pumps, almost three kilowatts of power for a few uh, hundred kilograms of water every ten to twenty cycles. It's it's not it's not viable. It's not worth it. And the dirt that's building up here, once there's enough dirt, it would uh, kind of take up a whole tile, and that's going to gum up all this thing here, and that's going to mess up this whole thing, and we would have to go in with a dupe and fix it in the non-debug mode. So it's fun to build and try out again, but it just seems like a super inefficient way to deal with polluted water. I'd almost rather turn dirt into sand and then use our traditional our traditional uh, water purifier, which is pretty darn good at turning polluted water into clean water. Yeah, so let me know in, in the comment what you guys think of this thing, uh, possible improvements, and maybe some other ideas for things you want me to test out in debug mode. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.